السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله today we'll go through briefly some of the benefits that we learned from سورة الصفات this beautiful سورة that is 182 verses 182 verses that has great benefits and no matter how much we extract benefits from the Quran it never ends it never ceases and the joy of this life is to be connected to the Quran to be attached to the book of Allah to have the Quran on a daily basis our means of nurturing our souls and our actions and our speech and understanding it in the light of the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, his speech and actions and the way that the Sahaba عنهم, were upon. Uh, there are so many things to be mentioned, uh, but uh, just uh, briefly, inshallah ta'ala, uh, as we saw from the surah, that uh, this is a Makki surah, so the subject of the surah, as we know, matters of foundations of the deen, but it starts with the mention of the angels, and also it mentions throughout the surah the angels too. Uh, that the verses talks about how the angels that they are in state of worship of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and they they worship Allah subhanahu wa taala in rows, exalting Allah subhanahu wa taala. It's something that we should uh, also reflect upon this of how that the believers they do the same thing. We are uh, when our, when we are commanded to obey Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and to establish the most important thing in our day and night, which is the salah. Uh, we are in harmony with the rest of the creation of Allah, and especially the angels, those who are in constant worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala with full devotion to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So uh, this is uh, something to pay attention to because it's mentioned in the beginning of the surah and. Throughout the, or towards the end of the surah, when Allah subhanahu wa taala mentioned about what the angels they say about themselves, to reflect upon uh, this uh, meaning, and uh, it's of course it's it's important always to reflect upon uh, the surah when it was revealed. It was revealed in Mecca before the Prophet ﷺ made hijrah, and uh, for those who were present in Mecca, those who were first addressed by the surah. Either the believers, you know, and the believers, they were so much uh, less in number and they were faced with all kinds of challenges and threats from the disbelievers and some of them are being tortured in Mecca and they have so much, uh, you know, all kinds of, of, uh, of, of trials that they had to go through. And of course, the kuffar, those who deny the truth clearly and that's many times people uh, or even the ulama of the tafsir when they talk about the Mecca Surah and they focus more on that those who are addressed by the Surah are mainly the Kuffar, which is true. That's why the Surah talks about the foundations of the Deen, uh, refuting what the Kuffar are saying, things of that nature, and calling them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But also uh, the believers in Mecca, the, the, early, uh, the early believers, they are the best of all of the Ummah as we know. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, when he uh, would give more of the mention of the virtue of Al-Muhajireen, the first of the Muhajireen. The Muhajireen are in general better than the Ansar. And as sabiqun those who were foremost, those who were the early ones that accepted the deen of Islam, the 10 people that Allah subhanahu that the Prophet ﷺ stated they are from the Mubasharim Bil Jannah. So how the, these verses affected them? And how it elevated their iman and strengthened their iman and had their yaqeen and their certainty in the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, this is uh, something also that we need to uh, seek this guidance from these types of ayat from the Quran and the Makki surahs and the Madani surah and everyone and everything of course. Um, so uh, when we looked into the, uh, into the surah and uh, the, the subjects of what's mentioned in the surah and some of the evil uh, practices of the people of Jahiliyyah and how is that related to the angels so they believe in the angels and how they are in constant worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that the angels are not the daughters of Allah 
and how the practices of the disbelievers by itself is a sign of how they are in need of guidance and how their actions are so evil, one of which is they would kill their daughters believing that they are the daughters of Allah or the angels are the daughters of Allah. And these, these girls, they become like that. And this is something that they invented and it has no, uh, of course, basis to it whatsoever. But this is, shows how the evildoers, uh, they would always have an excuse or they have an interpretation to why they do evil to the extent of which that sometimes many people, they would see the evil as something good and there's, they would become like intoxicated. They don't see the evil actions as evil. And one of the great favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon someone in this life is that you see things in its real way and form because we're living a, a life of deception. This is how the work of Iblis how the work of the shaitan and the helpers of the shaitan. So, and that's why from the dua of the Prophet والسلام, Allahumma arini al-haqqa haqqan wa rzuqni attiba'a wa arini al-bautila bautilan wa rzuqni istinaba wa Allah make me see the truth as the truth and, and provide for me to follow it and make me see the al-bautil, the falsehood as falsehood and uh, also make me avoid it or stay away from it. So, it's not about uh, you know, it's about knowing the truth and following it and knowing the falsehood and staying away from it. And it's all great favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the surah talked about the disbelievers and some of their um, doubts that they have with regards to the day of Al-Qiyamah and the resurrection. Uh, and these people of Quraysh, they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they would associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, the evidences that is presented uh, to them it's, it's clear that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things and uh, is just, uh, you know, if he commands something, then it becomes. Uh, and if they think of something as how can that be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them from nothing. And they all uh, creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Uh, and then um, uh, also it talks about the day of Al-Qiyamah. And that one of the names of the day of Al-Qiyam is Yawm Al-Fasl, the day of uh, the judgment where separation between the believers and the disbelievers, the day of judgment where people will be judged and people will be gathered in the day of judgment and the like of them. Uh, you know, and, and when we look at this life that we live in, uh, people are into groups, into loyalties. So people will be resurrected according to how, who they love and who they associate themselves with and who they are with, so they are going to be together. Uh, so uh, to always align oneself with the believers and to be strong believers uh, so that people would align themselves with us also, uh, so that we are leaders for others, not leaders physically, but meaning that uh, those who come after us, they follow us because it's a lineage that goes all the way to the to the Prophet, uh, and it talked <coughs> about how people would deceive one another and the conversations between the people in the Day of Judgment, the, the people of Jannah when they talk to one another, <coughs> to one another and the people of the Hellfire when they talk to, to, to one another and how is that related to this life and what we see with our own eyes and we witness in our own life so that it gives us strength to be patient because things will reach that uh, final uh, state when people will be either in Jannah or in the Hellfire. Uh, so it's it's so it's very important, of course, to get the hearts attached to what's going to be in the Day of Judgment uh, and how a friendship affects one another. In that uh, the the people of Jannah, when they would say, you know, I used to have a, a Karim, a companion, a friend. He was a disbeliever, and uh, they look and he was in the Hellfire, and he would say. Uh, that he would say alhamdulillah you know this is uh, that you that he almost fell into the same fate as that disbeliever and it was if it wasn't for the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said I would have been then with you so how close which shows how close it is in this life to be either from the hellfire from the people of the hellfire or the people of Jannah and that's something that brings the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hearts. And that only by the favor of Allah, a person is saved. And a person should not rely on the fact that he is good now. Allah knows best what's going to happen later. 
So to constantly be steadfast and to be obedient to Allah and not to allow oneself to deviate away from the truth. And then after this introduction to what comes afterwards, which is the mention of the prophets of Allah, Nuh alayhi salam, and then Ibrahim, and then Elias, and Lut, and Yunus, and how these messengers of Allah with their people, and uh, it talks briefly about what happened to them, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aided them, and accepted their dua, and made them superior and, and virtue in this life and in the hereafter, and they were safe and peaceful, peace were upon them, uh, as, as each messenger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that about them, salamun ala Ibrahim, salamun ala Nuh, and so on, which also shows that we need to follow their ways, because that's what is meant by the surah. Um, so, and then the beginning of the surah and the end of the surah is all together connected. Uh, and it shows at the end, you know, uh, the end of, of this, this battle, the struggle in this life between the truth and falsehood, as it's mentioned clearly towards the end, that no doubt that the messengers of Allah and the followers of the messengers of Allah are the victorious ones. And they are the ones that would have the, the final end is for them. Uh, so rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we see, the surah ends with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that deserves the perfect praise. So rely upon him alone and be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, one thing I wanted to also um, uh, share with you that was uh, great benefits from the ulama when they talk about the tafsir of the ayat. And I would mention this regardless of the specific verses. Uh, but uh, Shaykh Ibn Uthameen, rahimahullah, when he made the tafsir of the ayah, uh, someone summarized some of the fawa'id, some of the benefits that uh, the Shaykh mentioned in the surah. One of which is uh, to have al-ikhlas, to have sincerity, to have purity of intentions. Uh, and the one that is sincere, uh, he's always guided. If you are sincere in your heart that you seek in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always guide these types of people because a person is always reflecting upon the ayat of Allah. Because some people, their ibadat is become, becomes like habits every day. So it doesn't affect really the heart the way it ought to affect the heart from the ghafla and things like this. So, because whoever says La ilaha illallah with ikhlas, with sincerity, he has to, by default, he has to uh, submit oneself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be the further the, away the, and the furthest person away from kibr and arrogance and so on. Uh, also, uh, he mentioned, rahimahullah, that an ni'am or the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, upon the believers uh, is, is something that cannot even be comprehended. And that this is the ni'mah, this is the favor that should take over every other ni'mah on the face of earth. And we saw that when the people in Jannah and how the, what they say. Uh, and if it wasn't by the favor of Allah, everybody would be in the hellfire. So to be guided to the deen of Islam, to be guided to Al-Iman, to be guided to uh, be upon the sunnah, this is a great favor that we should humble ourselves that we want to keep it and not to make us arrogant, but rather to continue to be upon this. And as he says, if you go, if you go to the masjid, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed you to go to the masjid, then acknowledge this great favor of Allah, that he made it easy for you. When many nations on the face of earth are deprived from this. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon you to get to know the, the, what the prophets inherited after them, which is the ilm, this is one of the greatest favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, and as far as being victorious and being well established on the face of earth, of course, this is a great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, but what's more in people are in need of is guidance, as we heard before. And if they are guided, they will be victorious by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and that's why a person should not uh, look into himself as, I am this, I am that, but rather to look at the favor of Allah and to humble oneself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the Shaykh rahimahullah in his tafsir of the surah also he talked about how that the, 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 the intellectual uh, war against the people is far worse than the physical confrontation. 
And that's what we are facing with these fitan that we live in our lifetime, where it's, it enters every home. It's in, you know, every one of us, we have a share of how we are affected, right? Whether we uh, agree or not, but this is how things are. And this is, it's a war. Uh, and it's uh, we have to make sure that we protect our hearts. And the the war is when 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 two armies are in a, in a, in, a, in a fighting with each other, one is want something from the other. They want their land. They want their uh, positions. Whatever there is, right? But this type of war, what the what the enemies they want is they want your heart, and this is how the how iblis is. And there is menef. If there are paths. To the heart, how to how to get someone's heart, how, how to defeat someone to own their hearts is through what they see and what they hear. That's this is the path to the heart. The heart is covered. We don't see the hearts, uh, and how the hearts changes is with what we see and what we hear. So it's our choice whether to see and hear what what we ought to hear and see, or we leave it to the enemies of Allah. To make us or to destroy our hearts and to corrupt our hearts, and whoever uh, think that they they can control themselves or they can protect themselves, this is the first step to one's own destruction. But rather to rely upon Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and to follow the commands of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, and that's why the ayat when it says "Fa inna kunna when when the evil ones they deviated their followers. Uh, and how they would distance themselves from one another in the day of judgment, but it's too late for them. And that's why they they have all kinds of ways. Sometimes is with force. And you, if actually, if you look into the entire world, you would see how you would see how these enmity towards the Deen of Allah. Sometimes it's with terror and force. They 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 humiliate. They uh, they torture the believers, uh, as you would see in many parts of the world. Sometimes it's with uh, leniency with uh, kindness with all kinds of things you know and it's all the same thing uh, to to deviate people uh, and that's why a person has to be warned and we have to warn one another not to fall into the ways of the people of falsehood because at the end people would you know disconnect with one another and there's always there's always people that are followed and there's always followers so whether we like it or not uh, either we follow the truth or billah, a person would follow the falsehood. Uh, also for those who work for this dunya, their, their concern is this worldly life. you know. And the one that is successful is the one that he would make the work for this worldly life is a, is a work for the hereafter. And the ghafil, the forgetful one, is the one that makes the, uh, the hereafter work for the dunya, for the benefit of the dunya, matters of deen and things like this. And that's why the intellect and the reason and those who are smart are those who would be successful to follow what is right and to stay away from what is evil. Um, and uh, many other benefits, of course, the sound heart, who is righteous and who's not, uh, how to be uh, forbearing uh, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-halim, the most forbearing subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we give time for the people to repent to Allah, to have the evidence establish against them for those who continue to be in matters of evil. And one of the great benefits also that if one's iman is not strong, if one's iman is not strong, the falsehood calls affects him more, which is a very obvious thing. So that's why we need to work on our iman and to strengthen our iman. And one of the ways to do that is to protect our hearts. And when the iman is weak, anything can cause harm to the heart, then it happens in a gradual way and form. And once the heart becomes blind, the person is not able to see anything. He's just be going to be led astray. And that's why the, you know, many things can be looked into from that perspective. And every person that is doing good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for them from any difficulty. And that's why to be busy with the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're coming closer to the month of Ramadan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us witness the month of Ramadan and to guide us in it and before it and after it to be steadfast upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and that's why it's, uh, you know, uh, to uh, to be steadfast upon the deen of Allah and never to give up on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, which is also one of the messages of, of the surah.
uh, again, as, as mentioned, we cannot fulfill the rights of the surah upon us. But uh, once we have that concern that we want to benefit from the Quran, we want guidance from the book of Allah, we want the Quran to be a cure to the diseases of our hearts and to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be always connected and strong and following the book of Allah and to be watchful of the ways of uh, the shayateen. And as we heard yesterday, the last verse in Surah Al-Imran, Ya ayuhaladzina amanu sbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa attaqullah la'allakum tuflihun Be patient, be patient against your enemies and rabitu Guard your frontiers uh, physically and the non-physical matter aspect of it because they are out there to get you so and they're stronger than you uh, physically and with all kinds of other means if someone has destruction is much easier than building anything spreading corruption it's much easier than spreading righteousness things like this but the strength of the believers they have is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us and and uh, to uh, make us among the people of the Quran and inshallah ta'ala tomorrow we'll continue inshallah ta'ala with uh, or starting surah sad inshallah ta'ala barakallahu feekum wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa barakallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam wa alaykum wa rahmatullah